Hello and welcome to another wonderful episode of Iron Port. This program is proudly brought to you by Serene Insurance, Goa Company Limited, the Ghana Revenue Authority, the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, and Ghana Link, who are the operators of the Integrated Customs Management System. Our proud media partner is the Business and Financial Times. This week, we are bringing you part two of the discussion we had last week on the importation and clearance of vehicles at Ghana's port. And to help us with this discussion is a supervisor at the Vehicle Valuation Unit at the Customs Technical Services Bureau in the person of Justice Yajayim. Yes, a report. So one thing that you, you we didn't exhaust pretty much last week was the element of electronic electric cars yes and uh, people sent messages complaining that you know the duty on these cars you call it hybrid yes we uh, have by it, hybrid. It's, it's quite high and you're explaining it let's let's <clears throat> deal with that okay with the hybrid vehicles you see we have something we call um we we are ghana is a member of ECOWAS. Mm. so ECOWAS decided that economic integration yeah and it should lead to what economic development, so they have come in with this, uh, refined this uh, trade uh, liberalization scheme, which yeah. started yeah. from 1990. Yeah. Then they came out with a, a common standard tariff because if you move from a free trade area where there's free movement of people, mm. goods and services, yeah. there's a point that you have to, another stage where you have to form a customs union. Mm. And one of the features of a customs union is the CET, yeah. Common Standard Tariff, right, where they yeah. establish a tariff, common tariff that will be levied on all goods from outside the union. Okay. So let's say US, yeah. if you are bringing something from US, US is a member. So that common tariff yeah. that has been established it will affect all commodities. So, for instance, vehicles. Mm. But those from ECOWAS, yeah. they will be duty-free. Right. Just only the import duty. Yeah. Other things stay. Okay. So, with this, they establish a common standard tariff of 20% mm. for all vehicles that fall under 8703. Mm. And these are the vehicles, one, the saloon cars. Okay. Two, SUVs. Okay. Three, we have the uh, wagons. Mm. And then, so with this, you see that for the hybrid cars, we have problems now. This, are, this is where they all fall. Right. But in 2015, we were so, when we were supposed to implement this common the standard CET, yeah. yes. It delayed. You see, from January, it delayed until after, uh, October when we started implementing. Okay. And the reason was that ECOWAS, in its own wisdom, put in a flexibility measure. Mm. We call it a supplementary tariff uh, uh, measures yeah. for all the member countries. Mm. So that if, in order to avoid the harsh effect mm. of this increment of taxes yeah. on the citizenry, mm. they decided that for every member, you, you, you had the opportunity to, to adjust gradually the 3% of your tariff lines. Right. You see, so the government of Ghana took that opportunity and applied to ECOWAS. Right. And because it was 3%, because the tariff lines are over 5,000. Mm. So if you calculate the 3%, uh, 3 it's giving you 177. Wow. You see, so just that we, we needed to work within this. So yeah. government, in picking it, they, they decided to leave out some of the items who were not an issue because okay. that in 2015 we didn't have an issue with the, yeah. uh, uh, this uh, hybrid, hybrid vehicles yeah. coming in because yeah. we didn't have people didn't even like them yeah. because they didn't know what they were meant for uh, so it was left out yeah. so that 20 percent which affected all these tariff lines mm. and 8703 mm. they were changed with the exception of that one yeah so that's why it stayed at 20 percent mm. yes it's not as if Anybody want to yeah. maybe destroy or doesn't see the benefit of hybrid vehicles. Yeah. So now that the, there's that opportunity for people to use it and know how good it is. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think there have been discussions on it, mm. how to go around it. Yeah. And I'm sure with time it will be resolved. Yes. Yeah. So in short, that is, that is 
That is yeah. why it's twenty percent. Mm. Yes. Mm. All right. So personally, what's your view about it? Do you think that um, it is apt for you know duties of these category of vehicles, hybrid vehicles, to 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 be up there? Oh, with respect to environmental concerns, where even Germany is moving away from diesel cars, mm. and we know that it's having a toll on the environment. Yeah. That's why they are doing so. Yeah. So we we'll yeah. also have to follow suit yeah. and look at some of these things that will avoid uh, navigate effects yeah. and then encourage those that will promote the positive effect like yeah. the yeah. The hybrid vehicle, yeah. because if you look at the emission, yeah. it's very I know the U.S. For instance, just a day or two, uh, President Biden, you know, initial yes. for you know uh, uh, a percentage of vehicles in the U.S. to be you yes, know I, electric. Yes. yes, and so I think Kataka, I think it's the way to go. is doing same. They are, yeah. they are also and because they fall under this uh, automotive yeah. uh, policy, mm. and they are getting uh, zero rated. So wow. I'm sure with time it will be resolved. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's take a look at uh, right-handed vehicles. Yes. That's how we call it. How, you, you are a customs officer. <laughs> how, how do you call them? Because people import these vehicles and they get here and they, there are so many challenges and all that, you know, and uh, you have now have to clear it. And uh, if you are even able to clear it, you can now clear it and you have to go and change it, remove it and put it to the, you know, uh, left-hand side and all that. Tell us about it. Okay. With the right-hand drive vehicles, mm. I think the law... Was changed in 1974 mm. to and if those days that campaign if yes yes to encourage people to drive on the right lane yes. as we do now yeah yes but you, the steering wheel should be on the left yeah yes so with this uh, they saw something good in mm. in that aspect mm. where they look at you having a broader view when you are driving to avoid accident. Yeah. Even the driver, when you are far away from the other driver, yes, they, they felt that it was safer enough. Mm. So this, with the law came into being yeah. in 1974, mm. and it has been maintained. The only thing is that it was reviewed to allow a certain window. Mm. Yes. They were banned in 1998. Right. You remember that they were banned, all mm. of them, including yeah. the uh, vehicles beyond 10 sure. years old. Yes. But the problem was that any time they were seized, how to dispose of them was an issue. Mm. So it was costing the state a lot. So in you remember in the, uh, 2001, mm. when these double-decker buses came, yes. the law was reviewed mm. to allow for the minister to, to give permission yeah. for them to clear. Yeah. And this permission was delegated to uh, Gapua right. to ensure that Yes, uh, everything was done for the buses to be cleared. Yeah. So in that case, customs has over the years played a, an agency role. Mm. Even you know when customs started, uh, our controller, those they call controller, yeah. commissioner yeah, was sure. called controller. Yes, yeah. he was allowed to even be the treasurer yeah. of the Gold Coast. So okay. it's, it has a long history. Yeah. So That's wherever right. we don't have government agencies, customs is able to do their work. Yeah. Ministry of Trade, we've done that for on their behalf. So right. customs, it has been arranged like that the agents will apply to customs yeah. in Tema. Okay. Or if it's in Takradi, yeah. then when they apply, customs will then refer this to uh, the engineering department of Gapua. Mm. So Gapua engineering department, or even Sebon, they also yeah. have engineering department. department yes. Okay. So they, they, with this letter, they then go and then they take off the steering compartment okay. of the vehicle because yeah. they, are, they are supposed to tow it to the garage, whatever yes. they are supposed yeah. to work on it. So when they, even the, at the same one, they have to tow the vehicle to the garage before yeah. they come back for the steering compartment, compartment because some of them will be tempted to drive them yeah, because sure. maybe you have to pay 600 yeah, sure. to tow the vehicle. Yeah. Yes. So for now, that's the arrangement there. But for others, they do the, for most of them, mm. even all from Dubai, mm. you see that they have already converted them. Yeah, okay. They, they convert them in Dubai before they even bring, bring them in. in. So they don't have issues, issues with that, yeah. yes. So in brief, this is the arrangement in place. All right, so, so do they clear as normal, just normal vehicles they or, or they attract additional charges? No, there's no penalty. The only penalty they attract is a DVLA. 
Okay. When they are registering, yes, they, okay. they pay a penalty. But if you are going to register a vehicle at DVLA, that's when you have you must have finished converting it before you go there. Yes. So the job of the DVLA is supposed to inspect. Yeah. The technical department is supposed so to inspect to, to be yes to judgment. ensure that uh, everything has been properly done. Mm. And to do that, because they don't do it for other vehicles. Yes. So once they do it, it's a service they provide. Yeah. So okay. it attracts a fee. Okay. And I would want to find out from you, there's this perception sometimes that uh, the higher your engine capacity, the higher your duty. Is that right? It's true to some extent. Mm. The, it also depends on the vehicle. Okay. If you bring a pickup, mm. 5.7, 6.2, the F-150, yeah. it's 5%. Yeah. You see? So it depends on the vehicle. Mm. If it falls under 8703, mm. what is 8703? Yes, these vehicles which fall the saloon cars, SUVs, mm. you have the uh, uh, wagons, yeah. the one we call family car. Yes. Yes. This category. Mm. If you have a diesel, it's even divided into diesel and petrol. And petrol, yeah. Yes. If you have a diesel car mm. and it has an engine capacity mm. up to 1.5, yeah. it's 5%. Yeah. Okay. If it is beyond 1.5, up to 2.5, mm. it's 10%. Mm. If it is beyond 2.5, mm. for environmental concerns, yeah. it's 20%. Wow. If you come to petrol, mm. if it's up to 1.0, yeah. it is 5%. Mm. From 1.0 to 1.5, it's still 5%. Yeah. But if it is beyond 1.5, up to 3.0, mm. it's 10%. 10%. If it's beyond 3.0, Zero. then it's 20%. 20%. So that's why I said to, to, depends on the vehicle. Mm. Yes. All right. So you mentioned uh, diesel and you mentioned petrol. What yeah. about cars that use gas? Because nowadays, most of the cars that come in from Korea and all that, you know, these Hyundai cars, most of them are, uh, you know, run on LPG. Yes. We place them under petrol. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So um, quickly, I just want to find out from you how are vehicles meant for transit yes. are handled in the port? Okay. The same importation, Arava, mm. Tema, Takradi, mm. Aplau. Mm. If the evaluation is done, the same normal, it goes through classification, valuation, then approval. But for now, mm. the arrangement said, may say that it is valued in Tema. Mm. There's an officer who has been assigned that role who values all the transit vehicles yeah. in Tema. Mm. So, but it goes through the same process. Yeah. So if that is done, because the duty has not been paid, mm. The duty element has to be secured with a bond. Right. So the assessment that is done, that is the essence of it. Mm. The duty calculation that has been done, yeah. that is the essence because of the bond. Mm. So we then know that the duty element on this Toyota Corolla is this much. Right. So based on the assessment, they go to uh, SIC, mm. which is the main service provider, yeah. to, to bond the vehicle. On your behalf, yeah. so you pay a fee for that. Mm. The transitor pays a fee for that. Right. So when that is secured, he comes back to customs. They do examination, check everything, ensure that what you are declared is the same. Then the examination comes after if it's done and everything's okay, it is secured with e-tracking device mm. for the monitoring. So it's mounted on the vehicle. Yeah. So they are able to monitor the movement because right. some of them will want to divert. If it's meant for Ghana, but they just because they know the law, they want to negotiate the law. So yeah. they will go and take maybe Burkina Faso address or something and do it. So because of this element, mm. the device is mounted on it. And then officers are able to monitor from the transit office, yeah. head office, as to whether you are really taking the route you declared as your route or you want to divide. Mm. So when it gets to the exit point, like the Paga, we have certain areas. Paga, Kulungungu for Upper, Upper East. We have the Hamle for Upper West. We have Elubu, Aflao. Mm. So these are the points. So you can't just exist at any point yeah. apart from the designated point. So when they get there and then before they exit, the officers will disarm the 
tracking device mm. and a process for them to exit. Okay. Yes. All right. So they will enter in the system. Yeah. Yeah, because it's connected. It's okay. just a button. They will enter. Haven't seen transit vehicle would make model type yeah. chassis number meant for Mali, Niger, mm. or Burkina Faso. Yes, okay. I think you just have to run us through the issue of over average yes. vehicles. When you bring in a vehicle that is more than ten years, yes, from the year of manufacture, you it attracts overage penalty. Mm. So if it is a saloon car, SUV, station wagon, if it is Beyond 10 years, up to 12 years, yes. you pay 5%. Beyond 12 years to 15 years, you have to pay 20%. Mm. Beyond 15 years to 25 years, you have 50%, mm. 50 yeah. to pay. Yeah. That's CIF, 50% yes. of the CIF. Yeah. If you beyond 25 years, mm. up to 35 years, 70% right. of the CIF. Yeah. If you beyond 35 years, 100%. that's 100%. Okay. If you mm. come to the vans yeah. and the buses, it will be beyond 10 years up to 12 years. Okay, yes. If it be beyond 10 years up to 12 years, 2.5%. Mm. It will be beyond 12 years up to 15 years, mm. it's 10%. Right. Beyond 15 years up to 20 years, okay. it attracts 20%. Mm. And then beyond that uh, 20, uh, 20 years up to 25 years mm. is 50%. I'm sure you've gotten some insight into how uh, penalties on the overheat vehicles are calculated as well as how transit vehicles are handled through the ports of Ghana. Ion Port returns after this break. Every now and again, Goil makes good things happen. This time, Goil has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Go Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Go Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Go Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Go Super XP Run 95. Now, there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goil has that sorted. Goil, good energy. Electricity, electricity, then pay your taxes. Yeah. Our taxes, our future. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small, why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is, you still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water. Or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Welcome back from the break. There are news and activities happening within the port and maritime industry. Next. 
The Minister of Transport, Kwekufu Siyama, together with his two deputies, have paid a two-day working visit to the port of Takrade, Axim, and Discov Fish Landing Site. The purpose of the visit was to inspect expansion works at the port of Takrade and also introduce his deputies to the management of the port. He inspected the liquid bulk terminal, which was commissioned last year by the Vice President, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia, the dry bulk jetty, as well as the ongoing construction of the Atlantic Container Terminal. He expressed optimism that the port of Takrade will soon become the port of choice in the West African sub-region. And by the middle of this year, Takrade port should become a port that was built in 1928 to see a new face to become the new port in the West Africa sub -zone. The minister revealed that due to the change in engineering, the first vessel call would be by the end of December. So I'm hoping that for where, where we have reached over the, the level of progress that we made, we will be able to meet that particular timeline of first vessel calling at eight years in December this year. Earlier, the minister and his entourage visited the Axim and Discord Fish Landing site where works are progressing steadily. In Axim, 2.5 hectares of land has been reclaimed from the sea and the breakwater of 500 meters long has also been constructed. In Discord, a 150-meter breakwater has been constructed to prevent sea erosion and destruction of canoes by the waves. A key wall of 50 meters has also been constructed to aid in the loading and offloading of fish by fishermen. The minister of transport said, but for the COVID-19 pandemic, the construction would have reached an appreciable level. That notwithstanding, he said, he was very impressed with works on both the Axim and Discord fish landing sites. The director of the port of Tema, Sandra Opoku, has entreated the security personnel of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority to remain committed to security training programs organized by the Port Authority so as to maintain the high level of security Ghana's ports are known for. The director of ports said this during a passing out ceremony held for new recruits for the security department of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. Our focus as a port authority is facilitating trade in a safe and secure port environment. This training was designed to equip you with the necessary skill to conduct your duties in a diligent and professional manner. She said it is even more imperative for the Port Authority to tighten its security in accordance with the demands that come with increased maritime crime in the West African sub-region. Threats of terrorism and piracy is rife and on the rise within the sub-region and this requires that you exhibit vigilance, hard work and commitment towards duty at all times. The 291 new recruits undertook a four-week standard military orientation training at the Army Recruits Training School at Shy Hills in the Greater Accra region. Over the period, the recruits were taken through basic but comprehensive military craft that encompasses physical training, drill, map reading, first aid, search procedure, operational security, detection of improvised explosive device, and port-related subjects, among others. The DP of Tema thanked the commanding officer and staff of the training school for transforming the recruits into qualified security officers. In a related development, a passing out ceremony for 75 fire brigade recruits of the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority who will be working in the port of Tema has been held at the Fire Academy Training School in Accra. The recruits comprised 19 females and 56 males. They were taken through hydraulics, chemistry of combustion, pumps and primers amongst others in the four-week training and demonstrated their skills in some operational drills. The chief fire officer in a speech read on his behalf by DCFO Edward Ashon, director of human resource and training, said the training has boosted the confidence of the new recruits and thus will enhance their overall performance. For you to be successful, please continue to remind yourselves of the eight cardinal points of a fireman. I wish you all good health, a fulfilling career with a bright future. The director of port of Tema, Sandro Poku, was optimistic the new recruits will be able to discharge their duties in a professional manner to safeguard the ports of Ghana. With the appropriate equipment and augment our staff while sparing no effort in ensuring that our newly recruited firemen receive the requisite training to enable them to discharge 
their responsibilities efficiently. It's time for some international ports and maritime news. Danish shipping and logistics giant EP Mola Mesk has continued to deliver strong growth and profitability with profits going up to $3.7 billion in the second quarter of 2021. Revenue was up almost 60% to $14.2 billion compared to the same quarter last year and EBIT amounted to $4.1 billion, which is up more than five times. With a net profit of $3.7 billion in the second quarter of 2021, the net result for the first half of 2021 went up to $6.5 billion, the company revealed in its financial report. The largest ever dredging and land reclamation contract in Demes history, the Abu Kher port project in Egypt, is in full swing now. According to the Belgian giant, this project includes the reclamation of 1,000 hectares of new land. It also includes deepening of the port's approach channel to 23 meters and dredging of the tunnel basin to 22 meters. This ambitious mega project will create land for the expansion and further development of Abu Kher. The project will see the deployment of Demers Giant's new Qatar suction dredger, Spectacles. Now to schedules of vessels in the ports, those at Anchorage and those expected in the coming week, plus the Bank of Ghana exchange rates you need to know to clear your goods from the port next. Up next, we have your comments. Ohema from Tema is asking, why would a vehicle originating from, say, Japan, but coming through UAE, be valued in USD instead of Yen? Ohema, according to the customs official, vehicles shipped from UAE are valued in dollars because that is the currency of assessment for all vehicles from that side. But once it is shipped from Japan, the Yen is used. I'm Evans from the University of Health and Allied Sciences in Ho. Please, I would like to know which platform I can get access to the list of registered vehicle importing agents. Well, Evans, you can visit the website or offices of the Ghana Institute of Faith Forwarders Association of Customs House Agents Ghana and Customs Brokers Association Ghana. This one says, ask the customs officer to make us understand what they mean when they refer to a vehicle as new. According to the customs officer, if a vehicle is considered new, it means it hasn't been registered and used. If it is used, it means it has gone through registration and has been used. So that's all for this week's episode of Iron Port. Thank you for watching and thanks to the entire crew. Join us same time next week.